Greeting friends, Bob Mosier here, one of your co-hosts for the Five Moments of Need Performance Matter series. Welcome back. And today we're going to focus in one of our areas called Methodology Matters. And particularly we're going to focus in on one of the Five Moments of Need areas that focuses on the classroom. You know, it, we talk about the moment of applying this series all the time and for good reason. So much can be done about helping our learners move into the workflow, right? At the same time, we also know that the classroom clearly, right, is a powerful moment in the five, five moments of need. In Train, Transfer, Sustain, it is where we ramp up to some level of mastery. But here's an exciting thing we've realized with the power of the five moments. When you build first for apply, when you have a powerful EPSS that you can use in, the, in, in other things in the five moments of need in Transfer and Sustain, a remarkable thing happens in the classroom, and that is it becomes a place of enablement. Not so much a place of content, right? Not so much a place of, of, of knowledge transfer or knowledge gain. That's all part of it still, clearly, particularly for the most critical ones we've talked about. But more importantly, friends, it is a place where the enablement of a learner in the five moments begins. It's where their journey begins that when they get back in the workflow, they have been taught not just content, but how to transfer that content through the remarkable tools that you'll build. Quick story. A while back, we had done some work in some of the initial designs in the, this type of learning in a classroom. And we had a very gifted instructor up in front. The class was written really well, very lab-based. Some really remarkable things could have happened in the classroom. Unfortunately, we're sitting in the back, we're watching this gifted instructor, supposed to do a 10-minute lead-in. 10-minute lead-in to what's supposed to be a discovery lesson for the learners. 45 minutes into their 10-minute lead-in, <laughs> we finally basically stopped the class, took a break, we pulled the instructor aside and said, look, what are you doing? He's like, you know, here's the problem. I can't shut up. <laughs> he goes, I, I, I got myself in that training mode where I got to be supportive and helpful and I can't, I have to say everything, right? And so they, this 10 minute lead in that should have been enabling fell back into a classic training lecture mode. That introduced us to a model we thought was important. That is in the effective application of five moments of need in the classroom. We can't leave the flow of content up to happenstance. And by that, that, by that I mean, I don't mean the outline of content, I mean the way in which the content is instructed. One of the more powerful purposes of the classroom in the five moments, even more than the old days of just getting through everything, is the empowerment, the enablement, the courage of our performers that when they leave the classroom and they've gotten the critical skills, they have been enabled, they have practiced, they have been taught how to stand self-reliant. So let me introduce you to a powerful method using classroom called ramp up, ramp down. Basically what happens is there's three axes we have to watch that happen during a classroom, right? The axis along the bottom, of course, is time. That's how long a class takes to eight o'clock to five in a one day course, Monday to Friday in a five day course, right? That's eight o'clock of the first day and then however the classroom ends. The axis on the left represents the degree to which the instructor supports the learners in their learning. It's not teaching, it's the degree to which they support the learner as they deal with all the frustrations and challenges of learning in a classroom. At the very high end, hand holding. High end of the, the, the instructor is literally holding the hand of the student if they have a question, I raise my hand, Johnny can I help you, and blah 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 blah, and basically the instructor says, well, let me show you, or the answer is 12, right? Little to no cognitive involvement there, little to no problem solving by the learner, high hand holding. Bottom of the axis is the complete opposite, zip. The, learn, the, the instructor literally, if a question is asked, goes, you know what, Johnny, great question, but you know what? You have the tools and you've been enabled to answer that question on your own. Give it a shot and I'll come by and guide if you need help. The axis on the right is the complete opposite of that, friends. The axis on the right is the student's ability to do the same thing. At the very top, the learner is completely self-reliant. They can completely problem solve on their own. They may not know the answer, but they can get to the answer on their own. The bottom of the axis is the opposite of that. No clue. They have no idea how to help themselves and even begin to tackle a problem. Notice the arrows that have just appeared in the chart. This is what's called ramp up, ramp down. And here's the premise. We want to intentionally, throughout the day, ramp the instructor out of the support business while we ramp up the student's ability to support themselves. And if you notice the arrows that just appeared, there are certain ways to do it in a very evolutionary and supportive way. Notice the first thing we add in the classroom and the design are peers. 
right? I mean, people in intuitively, and if you know the performance support pyramid, students in intuitively go to others, right? We bother others who know when we're in trouble. That's great. It, it, it's, it's not the instructor, right? It, but it's still someone else. So, but, but it's a great way to ease them in while we ease the instructor out. But that's not where we leave them. Notice the next and very important arrow that appears, and that is your EPSS, your performance support structure. We want to get them off of any dependency, be it us or peers, and have the student stand self-reliant by letting them use these tools. And notice by the end of the day, friends, the instructor has completely zeroed out even before the day ends. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the student has gone well past that on their own and well into the workflow, having been taught, taught how to stand self-reliant as part of instruction. So to wrap up the model, let's talk about that instructor part. Notice how the arrow for the instructor stops just shy of the end of the day. I mean, why, why, not, why not run it right to the end, right? Why not have the instructor right till five o'clock still kinda helping the students? Well, friends, here's why. Students have to stand self-reliant in the safest place that they can learn, and that's the classroom. That's what, that, that's what the classroom is spectacular at. It is a safe learning environment. Here's the problem, friends. The workflow is not. The workflow is terrifying. A learner is not going to go out in the workflow with the most powerful of EPSS on their own and risk some critical things that they could hurt themselves, others, or even lose their job unless they have practiced that skill. So notice, the, the instructor ends where there's this part of class where they literally do, they still teach, but they literally just do not help at all. A hand goes up, I want to know how to do whatever, and the instructor literally says, great question, but here's the bottom line. In about an hour from now, half an hour from now, I'm out of here. You, the, the class is ending, you're entering the workflow on your own, I'm not going to answer the question. But here's what we have done. We have taught you throughout this class how to answer that question yourself. So let's do this. Everyone in class, let's try to answer John's question. Whether you know the answer or not, let's try to find it. So here's two things. Go off to the EPSS I've taught you. Find the question, raise your hand when you found it, and here's what we'll do. We'll have you answer the question. Of course, that's why John asked it, but also we want you to tell him how you got to that answer. Because folks, in the end, the most powerful part of that lesson is not the answer. The most powerful part of that lesson is the journey to the answer. That is where the five moments of need, train, transfer, sustain, become so powerful. And this is where the classroom plays a new role that it was never allowed to before and is incredibly powerful in the journey. We hope it helped. Uh, questions at the bottom, please post them there as always. And we'll look forward to seeing you in our next series.